Hey gang, my follow-up video to my Keystone Conference 2019, and I am not level. I've never really been on the level, but hopefully that looks okay. And now, you know, I'm in a car, but I'm not driving. And I'm actually not even behind the wheel, okay? So I'm in the passenger seat now. I have someone else driving the car, so no one worry, please. This, I've been racing 100 miles an hour since I got back from Keystone. Uh, I had uh, like a truckload of laundry to do. And uh, the, the coolest thing, cool, one of the coolest things about Keystone was that you would see girls, trans girls, in six outfits a day. I mean, they just couldn't get enough. They had to, they probably don't get out a lot around their house. They, they, they traveled somewhere where they could be themselves. They don't have to worry about anything. And they and they were they were trying on all their clothes. And it was so cool. They were probably swapping clothes, I don't know. But uh, even at night, they uh, you, I, I think I saw one girl with three different outfits on one night. Now, I'm hoping they were her own, but you never know. I don't wanna, I don't wanna judge. Okay, so after I left you guys, I went down to the banquet, and I had met a couple, like I said, I had met so many new people and made so many friends. I met this couple, Davina and Cindy, and they were so, so sweet and so cute and so wonderful, and I, I saw them when I got off the elevator, and I was at the reception area where they were passing out free wine, and, you know, that's always been a, one of the my favorite places to go is wherever they're handing out free liquor. But the um, I, I I talked to uh, Davina and Davina said to me, um, "Will you have dinner with us? You're going to sit at our table, all right?" And I said, "You want me to sit at your table? That's that's so cool." And she stepped back and she looked at me and she said in her you know most feminine voice, "Girl, you're the shit." <laughs> <laughs> now, I had to go and look that up. And, you know, I was taken aback. I had to go look it up. And and uh, so I got my phone out and I Googled it. And I thought, wow, that's that's actually a compliment. Uh, she thinks I'm pretty cool. And it's at, actually quite a compliment. And anyway, we had, we sat down together at the table and we had, uh, we had dinner. Now, they have a keynote speaker. The keynote speaker's name was Kimberly... Shapley. I don't know Kimberly Shapley. Whatever. Got another keynote speaker. Got to sit through this. Okay, this is cool. I paid for it. I hope it's fun. Um, hope she has something to say. Hope I can understand her. Hope the hope the uh, acoustics are right. So we were wrapping up dinner, and, and this Kimberly Shapley comes up and she starts talking, and she starts talking about her daughter, her transgender daughter. And she starts talking and showing pictures of her transgender daughter. And she starts talking about how she wasn't sure if her child was transgender or not. Uh, and so they did. she did everything she could to try to, to get the feminine characteristics and the mannerisms and the, and the desire to be a girl out of her young son. people from her church told her that you know we, you got to do uh, conversion therapy when I heard the word conversion therapy after reading about conversion therapy in several of the books the many books that I've read she she had me I gotta tell you this this Kimberly Shadley she had me a hello I began to cry as she talked about her conversion therapy that she had that she felt it was necessary to do on her transgender daughter and I thought to myself Rachel what are you crying for you know I mean you know this is reality you 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 know this happens you just read about it you've read about it you've 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 you know heard about it you've talked about it um, what's the big deal and I'd look up and I would see another picture of this beautiful little girl on the screen uh, fighting against all odds to to tell everyone that she was a girl and 
And then Kimberly talked about being ostracized and disowned, about realizing that it was time to accept her daughter as a daughter and to love her daughter as a daughter and to and to help her daughter and to save her daughter who everybody else was trying to change. So now I'm crying even more. And I, the whole time I, I, I was thinking to myself, you're making a fool out of yourself, Rachel. What is this person do? What are you doing? How, how are you crying? How could you be crying? How could you be this sad? How could you be this moved? How could you be this, this uh, upset? After all, you're the shit. <laughs> and, and I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop crying. And I began to realize that uh, well, not, not the fact that it was a really sad story, uh, but that it was be beginning to become a very strong and a very emotional and a very motivational story. And I don't know, maybe I, maybe I had too much estrogen in, in my syringe this week. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was right on the money, but I mean, it was like everything that she said, every turning point in her, in her story made me, made me, I just had these outpourings of emotion. And I began to realize that it, a lot of it was from my own frustration that I want to protect Kimberly Shapley. I want to protect her trans daughter, Kai Shapley. I can't do it. Um, now we're talk now I'm hearing stories about death threats as she continues to speak. And all I want to do is get get between her and the death threats and, and help these people out. Uh, now I'm hearing stories about how she's trying to change laws and she's trying to, to get things done so that her daughter can use a girl's bathroom. And I'm frustrated at the ignorance and the fear in people's minds that won't allow trans people to use the bathroom of their choice. Uh, and I'm thinking we got to educate these people. Just a lot of emotions going on. I stood up to leave and just as she finished her story, I, as people began to applaud, I ran from the room and I went to the ladies room and I stood in, the, in one of the stalls and I cried. And I looked down, I opened my eyes and I looked down at the floor and I, for the first time in my life that I can remember, I had a pool of tears at my at the toes of my shoes on the floor and I couldn't stop crying. And what she did, what this Kimberly Shapley did in her, in her talk was that she brought out all of the frustration and all of the anxiety and all of the feelings that I've had for myself and for other trans people. And the frustration of not being able to stand up for myself. I mean, I do stand up for myself now, but I don't stand up for other people. And the, the, the thing is, Kai Shapley, the trans daughter, the seven-year-old, needs me to stand up for her. She needs her mother to stand up for her. She needs people to stand up for her. She can't fight herself. She can't stand up for herself. She's not that's she's not strong enough yet um i do whatever i want i'll go in any bathroom you tell me you tell me to use and you can deal with the consequences if it doesn't go if things go south that's how i live my life and now i'm living kai's life vicariously through her mother's story and I've decided that I have to change, I gotta change some things. I gotta do some things differently, all right? I've got 2,100 subscribers. I've got 2,100 friends. I've got, uh, I, I don't know how to share my videos and get my videos out. So I'm gonna ask you guys, share this video, all right? The only thing that I can do is educate people. You know, I, you know, I educate people on my channel. You know, I try to educate them about all things trans. I try to help spouses. I try to help the trans girls. I try to do this. Uh, you know, tips, little tips and techniques to help yourself look good. The, the, uh, I want to, we've got to educate people about the fact that it's okay if we use the ladies room. You know, what, what bugs me about these, the thing, the thing that bugs me about these ignorant, 
um, fearful people that can't get their heads around us? Is their preoccupation with my junk? Okay, it makes me nervous. <laughs> I, I just want to use the restroom. <laughs> I, I, I don't give a thought to what you got between your legs. And if that's all you're about, is what I got between my legs, I get a little bit of, I get a little bit a little bit concerned about you. I know this is old hat. I know this that she's been around a while. I have been out of the loop. I've been trying not to be a social justice warrior, but things are going to have to change. Um, what can I do? You know, do I have anybody watching me from Texas? If I do, you, you you need to know about the Senate Bill 17 that just went to the Senate, where they're going to try to make a law that says any business owner can refuse to serve someone if that person goes against the business owner's religious beliefs. So, if I don't want to bake a cake for a gay wedding, I don't have to. I don't believe in gay people. If I don't want to fix your car because you're gay, I don't have to. Because you don't subscribe to my religious beliefs. Um, I don't know if it's going to go that far. If people are going to be that petty. If a business owner is really going to gonna lose, watch money walk out the door because he doesn't want to do that. But the fact is the, the fact of the matter is the people that make the laws want that law to be in place. And that's scary. Okay? The, the, the people that are making the laws are worried about what I got hanging between my legs. You know? And, and to, 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 to hit this to hit this one more time and talk about how it's just simple bigotry. Um... You know, one of my videos, a couple of my videos, I talk about how I've been accepted into the ladies' room because I'm pretty or because I look like a woman. <laughs> well, it's okay, Rachel. You can use the ladies' room. You look like a girl. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, you don't... You, it's okay if I got something between my legs that, that, that doesn't jive with the, with the picture on the wall next to the ladies' door, the ladies' room door. But as long as I look like a lady, oh my God. And that's exactly what it comes down to. That's exactly what it comes down to. Well, if you can get in there and get out, you know, without anybody getting upset, it's okay. Go ahead and use it. Oh my God. Um... You know, I'm, I got to take baby steps. I'm just getting started in this social justice thing, so I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go too far. Um, you know, Kimberly Shapley's got a Facebook page. Uh, if you guys want to look her up, um, find her. You know, give her some support. She's getting a lot of support. They they have a lot of support, but they need more support. They're they're trying to educate the planet. Okay. It has to start in Texas. They're in Texas, and it has to start there because that's where they live, and that's where they need the laws changed. And by God, if they can get those laws changed in Texas, then they can get them changed anywhere. But they're going to leave Texas probably when they get that law changed, and they're going to go all around the country if necessary. I really believe this. I really believe this woman because I, I got to tell you, I just got this. I just learned this compliment the other day. I'm not really good at giving it, but I got to tell you, I got to think that Kimberly Shapley is the shit. And, and uh, you guys know I'm not religious. Uh, but I did have the opportunity to speak with her after, this, after her talk. I composed myself long enough to stand in line and wait to talk to her. I gave her a business card. And then, just by chance, three hours later in the restaurant at the hotel, I was uh, bumped into by one of her, the people that was with her, bumped into me, and I turned and I saw Kimberly standing there, and she said, would you like to sit at my table with me? And I said, yeah, cool, thanks. And I thought, this is, this is weird. And we got to talk, and I got to listen to her for a couple hours. 
and we parted company. And the next day, on my way out, uh, on the elevator, I was all I could think about was Kimberly Shapley. And gosh, I hope there's something I can do for her someday. And when the elevator door opened, of course, I'm presenting as male when I'm doing this because I'm on my way home. The elevator door opens, and there is Kimberly Shapley standing in front of the door. And I smiled at her, and of course I was presenting as male, so she jumped back in fear. <laughs> and then she realized from my smile who I was, and we began to talk. And uh, I'm kidding, of course, but uh, um, it was just crazy. Uh, and I couldn't help after our brief, uh, brief conversation, and I told her, I said, you know, I, I really want to help you. I hope I, I hope I can figure out something to do. And she said to me, you ought, to, you ought to go into politics or you ought to run for office. And I thought, you know, I've, I've heard that from a couple of other people, but it means a lot coming from her because she's, she's a shit. And uh, she's been through a lot. And, uh, and that was that. But I, I thought, this is, this is crazy. I, you know, I, I, I met her on purpose the first time, but then we met by chance two other times. And yeah, okay, the hotel only had a thousand people in it. And, and there was only one elevator on that side of the hotel. It's actually three elevators. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, like I told you, I'm not religious, so I don't believe that God put us in the same place at the same time, but she might. That's okay with me. Um, anything else that happened at, at Keystone? Uh, nope. I think I got it all. I think that, that banquet, that speech that she gave, and the story of her transgender daughter was enough for me. I have a lot of work to do now. I gotta get my head together and I gotta figure out how, what direction I'm gonna go in. Let's see how many people we can educate about this. Help me, please. Share this video. Share it on your social media, please. Everybody's gotta know her story. The more people that know her story, the more people we're gonna educate. Love and peace to all. Thank you for putting up with this for 17 minutes. And let's just try to accept one another for who we are.